Apple computers thought it was cool. Nintendo thought it was hot. Why was transparent technology so trendy? And why did it kind of just fade away? Well, Ohio, it's Josh. E. I've been wanting to expand on this topic for a while. It comes up on social media like Twitter and Pinterest every now and then. But as of now, circa 2021, it's been really nostalgic to see and remember how early 2000s and late 90s tech had this cool wannabe futuristic trend of having see-through plastic. I had me a green see-through controller for my N64 back in 97, and I seem to have a thing for the purple see-through aesthetic as well. So I'm very intrigued by this phenomenon. Who started this trend? And where did it go? Well, when has anything ever needed to be transparent outside of us needing to see how much of something we have left in a bottle or something? Well, it's been useful for security, which is made to keep attendees safer while speeding up the entry process. The bags have to be clear so that if anyone decides to bring their favorite weapon and do something shady, it's seen by the security before they get any further into the event. The massive American prison system has a similar criteria to reduce smuggling and to exclude objects that could be turned into a weapon, like a CD. Oh no. A CD could be broken in half and boom, instant knife. Therefore, in order to listen to music, only clear plastic cassette tapes are allowed. Various prisons have a 0% opacity rule for other devices as well, like 0% opacity televisions, 0% opacity tablets, 0% opacity Walkmans, and 0% opacity typewriters. Correctional institutions in particular, like in California, will trust individual cells with their own TV sets, but they have to be inspected, and x-rays damage the equipment, so to have the TVs already clear and transparent makes it a lot easier to be checked. So the clear TVs are pretty unique on their own, but somehow that design left prison and became a contributing member of society. Now I say design, but it hasn't actually been patented by anyone. It's kind of like a color, no one can own it. It entered the mainstream and kind of peaked in the 90s as this new colorful plastic aesthetic and came out as quirky clothing items and electronics that anybody could purchase. Poochie, he's got love in his eyes. Even before it gained popularity, the idea of purity and clarity had been a marketing selling point in the 80s as clear dishwashing liquids and clear bottles. This clear campaign thing spread and in the early 90s evolved into Crystal Pepsi, establishing the idea that it's hip to be clear. Another big part of its inclusion in pop culture was the Apple iMac G3, an all-in-one computer that they made from 1998 to 2001 in a variety of colors. Perhaps the most unique user-friendly computer of its time. The design of this was mostly done by product designer Sir Jonathan Ive. In an interview he did with Time Magazine, Johnny Ive told them he seeks advice in unlikely places, such as working with candy making companies to perfect the translucent jelly bean look that we all know and love. He mainstreamed new materials, starting with the iMac in the late 90s, which had translucent, colorful plastics and became a huge trend in product design. At the time, Steve Jobs said it was a computer so good you wanted to lick it. So he was inspired by candy. The colors were literally named after flavors in their 1999 lineup. Bright, colorful plastic-based items were gaining more and more popularity and became a defining element of early 2000s culture. Now, nobody knows more about colorful 90s fashion than perhaps the Japanese, who are known for their innovative, stylistic approach to everyday items. Trendy fashion had an influence on the much-hyped, long-anticipated, iconic Nintendo 64, of course made by Nintendo, the leading Japanese video game company. The N64's target audience were preteens, so Nintendo's color design choices actually made a lot of sense. Outside of the good old charcoal, they had jungle green, ice blue, great purple, fire orange, clear smoke black, and even more, surprisingly. Nintendo played with this colorful transparency trend, mostly on their consoles and uh, controllers. They even made a clear version of the Game Boy. They introduced my favorite color, Atomic Purple, as a bonus controller for the regular N64 consoles. Most of their color experimentation went into the Game Boy colors, which already had the appeal of gaming in color. So this was the perfect marketing tool. Now, of course they had, you know, Atomic Purple, but 
They also had more rare limited edition models like clear black, clear green, ice blue, merenda, and that clear pink one. Most of them, of course, were exclusive to Japan. They liked to keep a lot of their more interesting variations to themselves. Nintendo wasn't the only gaming company to think of this marketing strategy. Sega and Sony dipped their feet into it whenever they wanted to appeal to children. At the end of the day, it seems that the translucent color variants were made to appeal to children the same way that candy does. Seeing electronics in this style would scream, I'm hip and fun and different. I myself was in the exact demographic for these toys and gadgets back then, but I wasn't a big fan of the candy colored N64. And as I got older into the PlayStation and Xbox era, I found that the neutral colored consoles were more appealing and more mature. As an older kid, I wanted the stuff that looked official and genuine more than I wanted it to look trendy. And that's probably what everyone outside the demographic wanted as well. I would start to feel that as expensive as these large electronics can be, it shouldn't give off the impression that it's just a nine-year-old's fake plastic version of the real thing. The only appeal that the clear style could have outside of the demographic really is that people who are fascinated with computer tech might have been very amused by seeing the inner workings of the equipment. Come to think of it, the trend probably helped teens get more interested in computer engineering later on in life. Anyways, the fake versus genuine thing ties directly into why the colored electronics fad came to an end in the 2000s. Companies would realize that the majority of the users are not preteens and that they would feel hip and cool just by owning the product, not owning a weird variation of the product. Well, as the trend died down along with the iMac G3 around 2002, technology was advancing and products were getting more expensive. A new generation of gaming and computing had started. The next iMac, the G4, came out in 02 and was the perfect example for how the fad was fading away. There were no alternate colors, but yet they kept the transparent look for their new screens and towers in a more tame and subtle design. Even when the Game Boy Advance came out, my favorite color ended up being Glacier Blue, a clear console with a subtle blue tint. The watermelon red in 64 days had come to an end. Now, just like any other fad, like Crystal Pepsi, it finds its way to come back in the style 20 years later in a way that can look brand new to the new generation while giving nostalgic appeal to the old folks. Today, you will see the option to customize the exterior of your expensive electronics with a different shade of color if you so desire. Like my Switch, I decided to change the plates with this uh, cool atomic purple plastic purely out of nostalgia. Some genuine controllers have a see-through colored option, but they might be a little hard to find. So in a way, the colorful transparency has already found its way back to anyone who wants it. It's just not gonna be a popular stock option anymore. I genuinely think the mass-produced colorful transparent electronics are a thing of the past, and they will remain that way until this Y2K futurism fad decides to come back. And this time, things will actually be terrifyingly futuristic. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more random topics. Thank you.